What's up guys, today we're looking at one of the simplest passing systems there is for both Gi and no Gi, the side smash to knee slide AB system. I call it the AB passing system because if they resist the knee slide, then you go to the side smash. If they resist the side smash, then you go to the knee slide and vice versa. Both passes involve forcing your opponent's leg flat on the mat but in opposite directions. If I enter with my right foot, then to my left is the knee slide and to my right is the side smash. For the knee slide, you need to use your knee to bring their leg flat on the mat, and for the side smash, you use your chest to bring their leg flat on the mat. Your opponent can only resist one way at a time, making it easy for you to use their resistance against them and use the momentum that they're providing. I'm going to show you all the details on how to make the system a success, as well as provide an in-depth look at the headquarters passing position, the knee slide, and the side smash. But first, I'd like to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, 511. So I just got some great stuff from 511 Tactical, and you know what I really love? Everything is not only incredibly comfortable, but so functional. Nothing impedes my freedom of movement at all. Like the PTR conditioned joggers, I can wear them for working out, jogging, or really any activity I want, but they're so well made and comfortable, I can just wear them when I go out or whatever. And these ridge pants are my new favorite pant for every day, so much freedom of movement and the capacity to carry everything I need for the day. 511 is the pioneering purpose-driven brand, making purpose-built apparel, footwear, and gear for those that demand more of themselves for the greater good. 511 field tests, designs, builds, and optimizes their products to help their consumers prepare for life's more demanding missions so they can always be ready. Save 20% from May 10th to 16th in-store or online as 511 celebrates everyday heroes for 5.11 days. Check out 511 Tactical and their new PTR gear or head out to any 511 Tactical store near you and check out all the cool styles available. Click the link in the description now to check out all the great products I've shown you and so many more awesome products, especially during this once a year limited time sale. Let's start with the passing position that we'll set these passes up from, headquarters. In the simplest sense, headquarters is when you have one of your opponent's legs between your legs and one of their legs on the outside. There's four main ways to get there. One, when you put your opponent onto their back from sit up guard and enter into their guard with one leg. 2. When your opponent is on their back and you enter by controlling their feet first and stepping in with one leg. 3. When you're already in their guard and you step over one of their legs. 4. When both your legs are on the outside and you pummel one of your legs to the inside using your knee. If their leg is already flat on the mat, you can enter right into the knee slide, but if their knees are pointed upwards, you need to enter by placing your inside knee on their outside leg. This controls their hips which has many benefits. It prevents the Delaheva guard and lasso guard and if you enter with your knee just in the middle, it's easier for them to get a knee shield and it can also hurt your opponent's uh, sensitive areas. You want to keep your chest low to control them and limit their mobility. There's a variety of different grips you can take. In the gi, I like to have the collar and in no gi, I like to have the side of the rib cage. So again, the system is to threaten the side smash to open up the knee slide. But first it's important that we go over the knee slide itself. For a good knee slide, you want to keep your hips glued to their body the whole time as you slide your knee from your opponent's thigh into side control. The arm on the same side as the knee that does the sliding should grab their head, sleeve, or tricep to keep them on their back. See here, I'm going for the knee slide and can't choose if I want the head or the elbow. They both do the same thing. They keep your opponent on their back. Your other arm doesn't necessarily have to have an underhook, you just have to make sure they can't get a deep underhook on you. A deep underhook is a great counter to the knee slide and it's the enemy of the knee slide. A shallow underhook is fine, although you should try to prevent it. If they do get a shallow underhook, you just have to keep your opponent on their back or it could become a deep underhook. A deep underhook allows your opponent to take your back, sweep you, or wrestle you. See how in both examples my opponent gets a shallow underhook and I just prioritize keeping them on their back. An underhook for yourself is ideal though because if you have an underhook on them then they don't have one on you. You definitely don't want to ever let people get underhooks though, I'm just saying it's not the end of the world if it's shallow and you deal with it. Easiest time to take an underhook is when your opponent raises their elbow from their body. This is a mistake that they're making. They should be keeping their elbows tight with T-Rex arms. You can also grab the rib cage or lapel, although there are other gripping options. In the gi, if you grab the lapel, you should grab the near side lapel, not the cross side lapel. See here, I almost get my guard passed by a white belt, but the mistake he made was switching from the near side to the cross side lapel, which gave me the underhook. If you overshoot your slide, you risk your opponent regarding, using all that space. It's best to slide out just enough and then back your hips up, turning your opponent's hips away from you. This ensures there's no space for your opponent to regard. If your foot gets stuck, you can pry it out by using your other foot. Or you can bring your knee to the other side for mount. You can also knee slide with the other leg or execute a rolling back attack. 
you want to keep your elbow on the inside to prevent the knee shield as well as keep it tight to prevent underhooks. Again, these two counters will kill the knee slide. Them getting the knee shield is usually a result of you not keeping your elbow tight and or entering with your knee in the middle. If your opponent does get a knee shield, we can counter them with the arm we've passed by smashing their legs together with our shoulder and grabbing their upper body to prevent it from extending away from us. Often I'll pass into mounts using dope mount. I have an old video all about dope mount. I say upper body and in most cases it's the head or lapel, but this is a good example of thinking about concepts rather than specific technique. I can't grab either so sleeve is the only option and it does the trick to prevent him from extending his body away. If they can extend their body away from us, it can be difficult to get the pass. Every good knee slider should also have a good arm weave pass to deal with the knee shield. Here's a good example of what happens when you don't have upper body control. Alternatively, to counter the knee shield, we can also quickly lift up on their leg and establish inside position with their elbow like we should have done in the first place. This is a cool trick that works really well. And now let's look at the side smash. It's called the side smash because you smash your legs together to the side. To do this, you need to use your chest to smash your legs down. That way you can apply all your body weight. If you try and use your hands, it won't work. Your arms aren't strong enough. If you need to use your hands to adjust the knee positioning quickly, that's okay, but you really need to use your chest to smash your legs together. With your inside leg, you need to take a wide step so you can staple their leg. A staple is when you have your toes on one side of the leg and your knee on the other. Ideally, you want to keep your head underneath their chin for additional pressure to control them. It's not always required or possible. For example, if they're framing on your head, or maybe you're just not in position to. From here, the only thing that can really stop you from passing is their inside leg, hooking your leg with a butterfly hook. There are four main ways to address this. One, by using your elbow to push the leg down to prevent their hook from tracking you. Two, by using your hand to push the leg down to prevent their hook from tracking you. Three, by using your instep of your other foot to push the leg down to prevent their hook from tracking you. And four, by entering into mounts using dope mount or a variation of it. Depending on how your opponent reacts, it may create a different passing scenario. Like when your opponent tries to adjust a half guard, you can backstep as they do. Or if they try to turn on their side, you can go to the body lock and take their back. So now that you know how to do both the side smash and the knee slide, let's recap the system. If you try and go for the side smash and face resistance, it makes it easy to enter into the knee slide. And if you try and enter into the knee slide and face resistance, it makes it easy to enter into the side smash. I'd like to say a big thank you to 511 for sponsoring the video. They went all out, they sent me all this cool clothes and they sent me this huge bag. Like, look at this thing, this is amazing, it's awesome quality, I super appreciate you guys. Make sure to check out their sale that they have going on right now. And a big thank you to my patrons, I super appreciate you guys too. And I just appreciate all the support in general. Thank you guys so much and I'll see you guys next time.